On August 1st, 1964, four boats were loading torpedoes at Van Hua, ordered south to sink a US destroyer in the Gulf of Tonkin. This is the story of the attack on the USS Maddox, and how mistakes and misunderstandings set the scene for the escalation of the Vietnam War. This channel's mission is to challenge the Vietnam orthodoxy through reference to primary sources. Much of what you know about the Vietnam War is either incomplete or false. Please consider supporting this channel and its mission through Patreon. The link is in the description. De Soto was the codename for US Navy patrols based in Keelung, Taiwan. The patrols began in 1962, passing along the coast of China and later expanded to other countries in the region, first entering the Gulf of Tonkin in December 1963. Additional De Soto patrols in the Gulf of Tonkin were ordered by the Joint Chiefs of Staff in January 1964. Probably the most important reason for the patrols was gathering information on North Vietnamese coastal defences for Op Plan 34 Alpha. The mission instructions call for the gathering of information on ground and air defences. However, the highest priority, and the only mission the USS Maddox had the capability of performing, was the gathering of intelligence on coastal defences, naval forces, coastal radar installations, visual observation posts, and their communication systems. While MACV may have assumed the DeSoto patrol would be useful to SOG when planning Op Plan 34 Alpha operations, it was an irritation to them. It seemed unlikely to produce useful information and would instead bring coastal defences to a high state of alert. The first of these patrols was performed by the destroyer Craig, which carried a comm van and an ECM van. The comm van was originally a shipping container and contained radio equipment which gave it a limited communications interceptability. The National Security Agency supervised signals intelligence activities, but the people responsible for radio communications interceptions were from the US military. The US Navy operated a major intercept facility at San Miguel in the Philippines, designated USN-27. Army and Marine intercept sites shared a facility at Pubai, south of Hue. One of three workstations in the convan monitored the VHF wavelengths used by the North Vietnamese Navy for short-range communications. At this time, the North Vietnamese used the Soviet P-609 transceiver, which had an effective range of three miles. The short-range signals could not be monitored from San Miguel or Pubai. The other two workstations monitored high frequencies used by the North Vietnamese for longer-range communication. With more workstations than the convan, San Miguel and Pubai could intercept more of the HF traffic. It could take up to an hour to decode and translate an intercepted HF message. An analyst was always on duty in the comm van to interpret VHF and HF intercepts. The four men cleared to read reports on intercepted messages were Captain Herrick, Commander Ogier, his executive officer, and Herrick's flag lieutenant. A KWR-37 teleprinter in the comm van received messages from San Miguel. Intercepts from San Miguel or Pubai which were of concern to the Maddox could be automatically decoded and printed. On July 3rd, MACV requested intelligence on coastal defences in areas Op Plan 34 Alpha raids were to be carried out, and on July 10th, Admiral Sharp, who had replaced Admiral Feltz's sink pack, proposed that the USS Maddox carry out a DeSoto patrol along the coast of North Vietnam. The patrol was likely to have been collecting information on coastal patrols. The comm van was also to provide information to the Maddox on possible threats to the ship itself. Hanoi did not know the Maddox was equipped with special electronic listening equipment and probably assumed its mission was simply intimidation. Commander Herbert Ogier captained the Maddox, but Captain John Herrick, commander of 7th Fleet's Destroy Division 192, was on board the Maddox and was in charge of the operation. The US was uncertain of the territorial limits claimed by Hanoi, but a three mile claim was assumed, and the Maddox was ordered to sail no closer to the coast than eight miles, and four miles from offshore islands. The Maddox was to cruise from the DMZ to the Chinese border, and continue for 40 to 45 miles, with the aim of observing coordination between the respective coastal forces. The command center for the North Vietnamese Navy was in Haiphong, Ta Suan Tu was the Navy's commander and its chief political officer. His deputy chief of staff was Zuan Ba Han. 
Before making major decisions on combat operations, the command centre would consult the combat operations department of the PAVN general staff in Hanoi. The NVN raised its combat readiness in response to the increasing threat from Opplan 34 Alpha raids in early July. Some naval vessels were moved south, and a forward command centre was established on Zhang River, at or near Quan Ke, under Deputy Commander of the Navy Nguyen Ba Fat, responsible for the coastal defence of Military Region 4, provinces from near An, south to the DMZ. American intercepts referred to the command centre as Southern Fleet Headquarters, and believed it was located at Ben Thuy, outside Vin, 65 miles northwest of the Zhang River. The command centre may have been located there temporarily while waiting for the construction of facilities further south. Chinese-built gunboats, referred to as Swato boats, constituted the main strength of the North Vietnamese Navy. The 83 feet long, 80 ton vessels had a maximum speed of 28 knots and a cruising speed between 15 and 18 knots. Their 37mm cannon were capable of engaging South Vietnamese PTFs and low-flying aircraft. Twelve Soviet-built P-4 torpedo boats, informally referred to as PT boats, were 24-ton aluminium-hulled vessels, 66 feet long and 12 feet across the beam. The boats were armed with two torpedoes and a pair of heavy 14.5mm machine guns which had the primary role of air defence. The torpedoes had 550 pounds of TNT in their warheads, which was enough to damage and possibly sink a destroyer. However, their range was shorter than the range of a destroyer's guns. Maximum range was 5,000 metres, but practical range was considerably less. The PT boats were equipped with Soviet-type 253 radars, known to the US as Skinhead, which could detect a destroyer up to about 15 miles in good conditions. The radar mast was designed to be folded down when not in use, reducing the boat's profile. Lacking a cannon, the PT boats would have been outgunned in a fight with the smaller and more nimble PTFs, and so the torpedo boat force, Squadron 135, was based to the north at Van Hoa, with the Swato boats scattered along the coast, where they were more likely to engage the Opplan 34 Alpha Raiders. Tensions in the Gulf of Tonkin were raised on the night of July 30th 31st when an Opplan 34 Alpha force attacked radar and military installations on Hon Nu and Hon Mei Islands. The North Vietnamese at first assumed correctly that South Vietnamese commandos were responsible for the raids, but the appearance of the Maddox off the coast soon afterwards raised suspicions that it was responsible for the shelling. The DeSoto patrols and Opplan 34 Alpha operations were not connected. However, CIA Deputy Director Ray S. Klein believed that the timing of the DeSoto patrol was deliberate. The Maddox was likely to meet a high level of electronic activity after a coastal raid. Two Swato boats, T-142 and T-146, attempted to pursue the PTFs, but without success. The Maddox had left Keelung on July 28th. Avoiding any use of radar or radio, it had gone unnoticed by the Chinese when it passed south of Hainan during the night. At 0629 Gulf on the morning of July 31st, it was almost exactly on the 17th parallel, the latitude of the DMZ, and the ship remained there until the four Opplan 34 Alpha PTFs had deported to the south, passing within four to five miles. Gulf time is Zulu, or Greenwich Mean Time, minus seven hours and is used here as it was used by the North Vietnamese and by the Maddox during the most critical parts of the patrol. The Maddox then moved about 15 miles towards the coast and resumed normal radar use at 0835. Before noon on July 31st, the Maddox was within 12 miles of the North Vietnamese Tiger Island and at 1633, the ship's radar was turned off in the hope the North Vietnamese would turn on their coastal radar but the plan did not succeed. The Maddox then spent the afternoon and early evening orbiting Tiger Island and the coast, just north of the 17th parallel, and then moved north at a distance between 8 and 20 miles from the coast. The position of the Maddox was first reported by Southern Fleet Headquarters at 0220 on August 1st, when the ship was near Cape Vincent. And from 0836, the Comvan intercepted messages that indicated a station on Cape Vincent was tracking the Maddox. 
This station, others on the mainland, and stations on the islands of Hon En, Hon Nu, and Hon Me track the ship throughout the day. Approaching to about four and a half miles from the island of Hon Mat, high on the list of planned or planned 34 Alpha targets, the Maddox collected various forms of intelligence information. The NVN was concerned about the presence of the Maddox deep within what it considered to be its territorial waters, and at 0430 the Navy Command Centre issued orders for Squadron 135 to prepare three torpedo boats for combat, T333, T336 and T339. First Lieutenant Nguyen Suan Bot commanded Section 3 from T333. The commander of Squadron 135, Senior Captain Li Zhu Kui, was also on T333 and was in overall command. The boats did not finish loading torpedoes until 2030 and did not depart south from Van Hua until 015 on August 2nd. While the boats were loading torpedoes, the Maddox was approaching Hon Mei, which had been shelled two nights before and was within gun range by 2030, further raising tensions. There was a clear understanding between the Naval Command Centre and the Combat Operations Department, led by Deputy Chief of General Staff Chan Kui Hai, that the boats would attack the Maddox at the right moment. Higher authorities, which were trying to limit escalation of the war, were not consulted or informed promptly. Kwai and Section 3 was ordered to the small island of Hon Ne, 34 miles north of Hon Mei, and to await orders there. However, communications were weak. Although T-333 was equipped with a long-range radio, it did not work well, and instead communications were relayed through the Swato boats. The time to encode and decode messages added further delays. The Comvan intercepted a message from Southern Fleet's headquarters to Swato boat T-255 at 23.27. The attack force has gone down, determined to fight the enemy tonight when there are orders to guide the attack. The message was also received from San Miguel at 23.45, and Captain Herrick was woken with the report. At 23.52, Swato boat T146 was informed that a destroyer was 11 miles southeast of Hon Mei, which was close to the position of the Maddox, and officers on the ship concluded the Maddox was the target of the attack. San Miguel, indeed, issued a report at 02.24 with the headline, DRV may attack DeSoto patrol. Between 0236 and 0248, Captain Herrick turned away from the coast, increased speed, and turned east out to sea while ordering general quarters. The torpedo boats reached Hon Ney at 0830, and Swato boats T142 and T146 soon joined them. The commander of patrol boat section 4, Transing Chi, was on T146. He would relay communications to and from the torpedo boats of Section 3, and at 10.30, the order to proceed south to Hon Mei was passed to Section 3, with the slower Swato boats to follow them there. At 05.45, Captain Herrick reported that continuation of patrol represents an unacceptable risk. His superiors disagreed, and ordered that the patrol be resumed in the morning though the Maddox would now approach the coast no closer than 13 miles. The plan was to orbit point D, 10 miles southeast of Hon Ney and 27 miles northeast of Hon Mei, which began with a slow cruise from this point towards Hon Mei. The Comvan intercepted messages at 10.12 and 10.36 that indicated Swato boat T-377 was tracking the Maddox. About 11.30, the torpedo boats of Section 3 were picked up on radar as they headed southwest along the coast from Hon Ne to Hon Mei. Herrick turned back towards Point D, and a few minutes later detected Swato boats T-142 and T-146 also travelling along the coast. The torpedo boats reached Hon Mei at 12.22 or 12.30, the Swato boats at 13.10. It's unclear who ordered the attack, but as the Swato boats were heading south from Hon Ne to Hon Mei, Lieutenant Colonel Lei Lu Lap, a political officer at Forward Command Centre K1, ordered the two Swato boats to attack the enemy. The message was garbled, and she assumed the torpedo boats and the Swatos would attack. 
It seems improbable that Lapp would order the Swatters to attack a destroyer, but he might not have known the vessel was a destroyer, and he had authority over the Swatters and had contact with them. Indeed, General Vo Nguyen Zap later remarked, you did not properly identify the target. Reaching Honmei, T-146 came alongside T-333 and, speaking through a bullhorn, Chi told Kwai that the torpedo and swatter boats were to attack the enemy. When asked who had given the order, Chi replied that Hid had come from Lap at the Forward Command Center. Not realizing Lap was at Forward Command Center K1, he assumed the order had come from the Forward Command Center further south, and had been approved by Nguyen Ba Fat, who he regarded as having sufficient rank to be authoritative. There was no certainty on the enemy the boats would face. A large vessel would be a suitable target for the torpedo boats. A PTF on an op-plan 34 Alpha mission would be a target for the Swatos. The Swato boats left Honmei at about 1330 and the torpedo boats at 1350, which passed the Swatos as they headed for the Maddox. The mood on the Maddox was relaxed on the afternoon of Sunday, August 2nd. Sailors were sunbathing and barbecuing steaks on the deck. But at 1334, the comm van intercepted a message from T-146 which referred to the sighting of the enemy ship. More messages were intercepted at 1345 and 1358 from T-146 to Haiphong, reporting the movements of the Maddox and that the Directorate would command the torpedo boats. The messages also appeared to refer to the launching of torpedoes. At 1403, San Miguel intercepted a message from Haiphong probably sent by Colonel Huang Cha, Deputy Political Officer of the North Vietnamese Navy, directing the torpedo boats back to Honmei. The recall order, however, did not reach the boats until they had already engaged the Maddox. The Maddox was scheduled to orbit Point D until 1800 hours, but at 1415 the ship turned northeast towards Point E. An uncoded report from Pu Bai received at 1425 clearly implied an attack, and the Maddox went to general quarters at 14.30. The torpedo boats were heading towards the position the Maddox would have been had it not been forewarned of the attack. The Maddox was in fact now heading southeast, towards other US naval units. The PT boats found themselves west of their target and had then to chase the destroyer, increasing speed from 36 to 42 knots. With the appearance of the PT boats, the Maddox informed 7th Fleet that an attack seemed imminent. At 15.08, with the PT boats at a range of 9,800 yards, the Maddox fired two 5-inch shells and two more at 15.10. Harry contended them as warning shots, but as it was unlikely the PT boats would be hit even with aimed shots, it did not seem necessary to offset them. As the boats continued to approach, the Maddox began rapid fire at 15.11, at a range of 9,000 yards. The destroyer was then about 28 miles from the coast. The 5-inch guns on the Maddox, Mount 51, Mount 52 and Mount 53, fired AAC shells, which could devastate a PT boat with a direct hit, and VT frag shells, which were designed to explode in the air and shower the target with shrapnel. The 3-inch guns fired VT frag shells. Doctrine required the three PT boats to fire their torpedoes at the same time at a range of 600 to 1000 yards, as the consequent broad spread gave a reasonable chance of a hit on the target. However, the separation between the boats increased as they approached the Maddox, with T333 in the lead. T339 and T336 launched their torpedoes at 1518 and 1521 from relatively poor angles, and it ranges between 1,215 and 1,620 yards. T-333 waited longer to turn in ahead of the destroyer and launch its single torpedo. The second torpedo had been jettisoned after fire from the Maddox rendered it unusable. Because the launches were uncoordinated, the Maddox was able to evade all the torpedoes. GMG-2 Ronald Stolzberg was Mount Captain of Mount 51. Stolzberg believed the lead PT boat was crippled with an AAC shell when it hit the water close to the boat. The explosion seemed to lift the boat up and drop it. The only damage the Maddox sustained was a hit from a 14.5mm machine gun. 
The Maddox was not the only US Navy ship in the area. On July 8th, the Joint Chiefs ordered Sink Pack to ensure an aircraft carrier was always present on Yankee Station at the latitude of Zanang. The carrier would accomplish reconnaissance and weather missions and be prepared to conduct strikes if required. In August, the carrier on station was the Ticonderoga. The Maddox pursued the PTs as they turned away, continuing to fire, but turned south when four F-80 Crusaders from the Ticonderoga arrived and attacked the torpedo boats. Herrick had already reported that he intended to retire from the Gulf of Tonkin when he was ordered to do so. The PT boats were heading for shore, T-333 and T-336 in the lead, with T-339 trailing. The Crusaders split up and each aircraft first fired two Zuni rockets before strafing the boats with their 20mm cannons. Commander James Stockdale and Lieutenant Richard Hastings attacked the lead boats, while Commander R.F. Mohart and Lieutenant Commander C.E. Southwick attacked the trailing boat, before also strafing the two lead boats. Hastings spotted flashes of gunfire while in a dive, and pulling out he felt a short jolt and realised a large part of his port wing was missing. He reported that he had been hit, but Stockdale believed the Crusader had been overstressed during the dive. A landing on the Ticonderoga would have been unsafe, so Hastings landed at Zanang. It's unclear how much damage was inflicted on the PTs, and by which weapons, but the F-8s scored hits on all three boats with their 20mm cannons. It's uncertain how the captain of T-336 was killed, but 20mm fire holed the boat's fuel tank or fuel line, leaving it without enough fuel to reach shore, and it was left dead in the water and pouring smoke, although most if not all of the smoke was from a smoke generator. The anti-aircraft fire from the boats was ineffective. The 14.5mm machine guns on T-339 jammed, and a bearing on the main gun mount of T-333 broke, which made it impossible to train the gun for several minutes. Hanoi claimed one Crusader shot down and one damaged. While Hastings aircraft was damaged, black smoke from J-57 engines at 100% military power from two jets at low level could have been mistaken as evidence of more damage. Rear Admiral Robert Moore on the Ticonderoga dispatched a second flight of aircraft with orders to sink the PT boats. Vice Admiral Johnson, commander of 7th Fleet, authorised the aircraft to pursue the boats as far as the coast, but when Moore saw the instruction for the Maddox to break off pursuit, he assumed this also applied to the aircraft, and he ordered the second flight not to engage the PTs when they reached the area. T-333 and T-336 headed towards the coast at high speed. When T-336 ran out of fuel, T-333 towed it to Samson, south of Lac Chow, and they arrived at 21.30. T-339 had received serious damage. The radio and both engines were knocked out, and the boat was taking on water through a hole in the hull. However, after several hours' work, the hull was patched, one of the engines was running, and it limped back to Honne, arriving at about 20 hundred hours. President Johnson decided not to retaliate for the incident, doubting that Hanoi had ordered the attack. Two days later, however, the Maddox would be involved in a second incident, which would dramatically change the course of events.